Here's some troubleshooting techniques when you're working on the EEPRs. The EEPRs are set up with two DC motors. Each one of the motors has somewhere between 75 and 95 ohms on them. The red and green wires are one motor and the black and white is the other. So if you're checking ohms, you need to check black and white and green and red. And then you need to check to make sure none of the wires go back to ground on the valve or ground on the building. Because if any one of them has any kind of ground on it, the motor will not work. And you have to check all four for it to work right. And this needs to be checked at the motor. Then when you're done checking the motor, you need to pull the connector off at the ESR board at the rack so that it's still connected at the valve and check and see if you have the 95 to 75 ohms on the red and green and, and on the black and white. And then check each wire also to ground because if you have any kind of short or open between the, uh, the connector on the board and the valve, uh, the valve, you know, it's not going to work. So once you get through checking everything, you then look at the valve itself where the connector hooks up. There's four pins there, little silver pins. If any one of the pins is bent, uh, the valve will not work. So you need to check that. When you're working on the EEPR, you need to know what bore point it is on the ESR board. So you go to the E2, you hit Menu 5, 186, uh, and that'll take you to your setup and it'll show you which board point you're on. Then you can put it in defrost, go to the circuit and do a manual defrost. Uh, and then once you get it in defrost, you'll have your gauges hooked up on the suction line in the case, uh, checking suction pressure. Uh, if it goes into defrost like it should, uh, your suction pressure should go up um, to like 80 or something, like 30 pounds higher if it's if the valve is actually shutting down in defrost. Um, and if you're back at the at the rack looking at the ESR board, it's the one that's got all the capacitors on it and heat sinks and everything else. Um, and you go to the one that said you look at the the lights. The red light will be flashing, and above it, that red light, it says close. So when it goes into defrost, that red light should be flashing, and it should be closing. Um, of course, when it comes out of defrost, the yellow light on the other side would be saying opening. So when that red light's flashing, this is what your valve is going to be doing inside the case. As it's flashing, it's slowly pulsing the uh, valve to see the, the connection on it so it shuts off. And, and at that point, your suction pressure should be going up. Occasionally, you're going to want to override the valve to either zero or 100 percent or something. If, if uh, for some reason you're wanting to shut the case down for three or four hours, you can override it to zero um, and and shut it down. So you can go into the menu five one eighty six uh, and hit override and hit override yes and then set the thing to zero and then the the valve will then shut down and you can uh, put it in override for four hours if you were on a service call you could put it on a timed override and put it for like five six hours or something like that so you can come back and recheck it after it's had time to thaw out and come back on again if you override it without putting a time in there it's going to uh, never come back on so if you put it to zero, your valve's going to shut completely off like this valve is. And then when you're done defrosting it or whatever you're putting it in override for, you can go back in, uh, go back into your override and set it to 100 or whatever you want to set it to uh, just to get it open again. You can't leave it overridden, but that'll that'll get it open. And if your case is completely dead, uh, if you override it to 100, that should immediately open it up and your suction pressure should drop. So if we if you override it to 100 and your valve doesn't open like this one's doing, uh, then you've got a problem some, somewhere. You're going to have to figure out what it is. Um, either you got a broke wire, bad point, bad, you know, something's going on. So if you open it up to 100, you're, if you've got your gauges on the suction line, it should immediately drop. 30 pounds and the cases start 
coming back down the temp. Uh, and then after you're done checking everything and you got it, you figured out the problem, you can then take the override off. Uh, just put, when it says an override, just put in for no or whatever and hit the enter or back key. And occasionally you'll, you'll get something that the ESR board won't open, a valve that won't open. So you can take one of these home belt tools that I've got. There's about five of them out there, ones at the shop. Uh, or a Sporlin SMA tool, which you can buy for $500, and it will manually open the valve. So if you hook it up at the rack uh, and just plug the connector into the tool, it will uh, it will either close or open the valve. Uh, right now it's closing, so if your case was froze up, you can close it manually and put it on defrost. And and if 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 you don't have any spare points on your ESR board and the board's bad, uh, you could just close it off and uh, let the case defrost until you can get the board. If you don't have a ESR board, you can always just plug that connector into a spare slot and watch the lights on the board. If you need to open it, you can watch the red lights, and then once it gets to a certain point, just unplug it, and the valve will stay wherever it is. All right, that's it for today.